A stone is thrown horizontally from the top of a tower. At the same instant, a ball is dropped vertically. Which object is traveling faster when it hits the level ground below? So if we draw a picture to conceptualize this problem, here we have our ground level, and here's the cliff. Now if we show the stone here in green, so this is our stone thrown from this height here of H, it will follow a parabolic motion as it is thrown horizontally from the top of our cliff or tower in, in this case. Now if we drop a ball from the same height, it will fall straight down to the ground below. Now we have to discuss the speed of how fast the object is traveling when it gets to the ground. So we're going to write down our given information for this case. So our givens. So for the rock, our Vx has some value and our Vy is 0. For the ball, our Vx is equal to 0 and our Vy is equal to 0. Now they both start off from an initial height y naught of h and they both reach a final height of y equals 0 once they reach the level ground below. So if we set up the equation y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus 1 half a t squared, we can cancel out y because that's 0 and we can cancel out this term here because v naught y is equal to 0 as well, so we can cancel that out. We're now left with y naught plus 1 half a t squared is equal to 0. Now we have to solve for the time it's going to take for this object to fall to the ground. So if we do so, we would have 1 half a t squared is equal to negative y naught, which if we then multiply by 2 and divide by a, we give us t squared is equal to 2 times negative y naught over a. To solve for just t, we take the square root of both sides, giving us t is equal to square root of 2 times negative y naught over a. If we now plug in for what a is, we would see that it's 2 times negative y naught over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Square root of that. This will give us a positive number under our square root allowing us to solve for the time. Now the important thing to realize here is the time for the rock to hit the ground is the same as the time for the ball to hit the ground. So they're both taking the same amount of time to fall to the ground. With that in mind now, we know that the final y component of velocity is equal to v naught y plus a t. Since they both have an initial velocity of zero, we can see here that they're both going to have the same final velocity when they hit the ground. So the Vy of the ball, when it's hitting the ground here, is going to be the same as that of the rock when it's here. So here we see that they both have the same vertical component. However, remember that the rock may have this vertical component, which is the same as the ball, but it has this small horizontal component and when we deal with this, we're going to have to deal with the resultant. It's going to tell us how fast we are traveling when we're hitting the ground. So that's for the rock. Whereas with the ball, we simply have that vertical velocity down. If we were to look at this, so the V of the ball is equal to Vy, while the V of the rock, or stone in this case, sorry about that, I switched rock and ball, you know, rock and stone, so where I put rock it's just simply the stone same thing so for the rock or the stone our velocity is now going to be we have to use the Pythagorean theorem here to solve for the hypotenuse here so the V of the rock is going to be Vx squared plus Vy squared so here we can see that the velocity of the rock in turn is going to be greater than that of the ball so here we can see that the stone or rock will hit the ground and will be traveling faster when it does so compared to the ball.